I've done a few photogrammetry videos, but the basic concept is that you take photos of an object from a bunch of different angles, and then there's software that stitches all those images together, turns it into a 3D model, and then you can use those 3D models in software like Blender. I've shown before that using a real camera with higher resolution gets you a way better result than just using your iPhone. Today, I'm going to try the opposite. Using these cameras, trying to 3D scan this shoe. I also broke my elbow a few weeks ago. It's super stiff, so we'll see how good this video comes out with just one arm. We're still gonna make it happen. So up first, we have this camera from Uptech, and it's just called Mini Digital Camera. And on the box, hit myself in the face. And on the box here, our resolution is three megapixels, which is kind of crazy. In 2024, three megapixels. So this is the lowest resolution camera that I could find and still buy brand new. And this was seriously like 10 bucks. My first impressions with the Uptech, it truly feels like you are holding nothing. It is like just air in your hand. You can really tell that this thing has nothing going on inside. So let's try and get a scan with it. But let's actually check out this setup first. We got a four by four silk up top. Underneath that, we have our shoe. That's up on top of a paint can so that we can get nice and low for those lower angles. We also have the whole thing up on white so that some of that light bounces back. And then we have our direct light source pointing straight down into our silk. Camera number one, three megapixels. Let's see how this came out. I can already tell from looking at these that some of them are a little bit blurry, which is already a bad sign. Yeah, some of these are truly bad quality. So I bet this one's not going to work, but give it a shot. All right, we're going to go full quality, sequential. Let's go. This is crazy. This is like a solid half. Three megapixels. I almost feel like this proves that it works. I mean, it's super grainy. The, the detail is bad, but it's all there. It's all there on the half of it that worked. Half of it is just nothing. It's like a cake slice. I do want to end up with a full, like, three-dimensional model out of this. So I think I'm going to redo it one more time. Let's take a look at the images and figure out, like, what exactly went wrong, and we can fix it in the next scan. Because this is the side that worked, right? There's some that are super blurry. I think it's letting our shutter lag because of limited ISO capability. Yeah, something like this. So I think that I just have to be like super, super careful and make sure that I'm not shaking when I'm taking the photo. It's gonna be hard because I have a broken elbow, but trying it again right now. Let's see how these came out. So right off the bat, they're kind of looking better. Like these two, these two look kind of bad. The shutter button's not in like the ergonomically established spot. So not that I'm trying to make excuses, but it's like I never realized how nice it was to have a nice smooth, like consistent shutter button. But I think these are better. I think overall these are better. I also ended up putting this black over the blue in the background. There's like a whole blue wall right there. And I think that the auto color balance was changing the white to look like it was red to compensate for how blue that wall was. So hopefully the black helps with the color and everything overall. Let's drag it in and see what happens. Let's see. It looks good. It looks good. I'm looking at the preview right now. All right, check this out. Check this out. 4.37 PM. Let's go. It worked. I mean, it's kind of what I thought would happen. It like, it like it worked and it looks bad. Yeah. I think part of it is like, sharpness dynamic range i don't think these cameras can do that i don't i don't think they can do that because i looked at some of the close-up shots that i tried to do like that look at that blurry blurry but it's like the the apple boxes in the background are in focus like it's it would be one thing if it was just bad but yeah look at the stop sign look at the stop sign the stop sign is like perfectly in focus in the background let me zoom in enhance 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 oh my goodness but yeah look stop sign is is perfect I mean, relative to this camera, it looks really bad, but yeah, dude, it just can't, we can't, we can't focus up close. So, but again, that's not really like a megapixels thing. That's just like a focal issue, like backup camera on a car lens can't do that. And this next camera in our little experiment, this one also doesn't have any brand name like on the box at all. It just says digital camera. I'm going to use this one to shoot at 10 megapixels. We're going to use everything that we learned from the three megapixel about the slow shutter speed and the low ISO range, and hopefully just get a good scan out of this first try. 10 megapixels. Let's go. And this camera was around 20 bucks. The 
The other one had it a little bit too, but this one has a funny shutter sound also. The buttons on this one are, are a little bit better. So you can see the, the shutter buttons like in the right spot that it's supposed to be in. So we'll, we'll see how this came out. 10 megapixels, what's it look like? All right, we got our JPEGs, full sequential upload and process. So let's see what we get, fingers crossed. All right, we got a result from here. It looks like another half scan. I mean, yeah, it's like tough to get a complete scan with these. That's all I have to say. The three megapixel looks better than the 10. That's crazy. Wow. Not what I was expecting at all. So, so maybe let's take a look at some of the individual stills. See why it might be like that. I think it's the stretch. Bet you that's what it is. That's weird. I don't really know how to like fix that. <laughs> that stretch chat. Okay. It's always like the inside portion. It looks really bright. So this is our underneath. This is our regular. And there's like violent color temperature shift in there again. It's hard to do these on auto. I think that's a big part of it. It's it's so hard to get these cheap cameras to work on auto. So so far, even more so than the sh than the shutter thing. It's like the auto exposure. It's just auto everything. And like it auto everything works with iPhones, but these cheap cameras just doesn't work. It's, it's actually a little bit crazy. All right, so I tried redoing the scan one more time with the 10 megapixel. This time I tried getting a little bit further back because it seemed like that same problem where you just can't get that close. And I think I was trying to be too close. So let's see how that came out. We are dragging our files in full sequential upload and process. We got something, it's looking better. And this time I was further back, so it looks like it gave us more of the room, which I guess is understandable. I know you can select like isolate object, which with better cameras does look good, but sometimes it gets a little bit confused. So I thought that for uh, the sake of this, I've been leaving it off. But I would say, I mean, we have a complete model. Rotate it around, give it a little crop in this spot. Okay, and then this one was the three megapixel. Yeah, so the three megapixel almost ends up like smoother, very grainy, but for right now the three looks better. This is crazy. And then this is the 10. Megapixels don't matter. Get yourself a three megapixel camera. No, but for real, I don't know why the 10 megapixel comes out so bad. That's awesome. All right, up next, beat up iPhone 13. And my prediction for this one is that it's gonna come out really good because iPhones are smart and this is like native for how Polycam works. So I think this one's gonna look really, really good, especially compared to the 10. And this is 12 megapixels. I'm also gonna spare you showing the whole process because I think we have an understanding of what the process is now. Let's see how the 12 megapixel iPhone 13 comes out. Looking at the preview and this is unsurprisingly good. Check this out, bam. Feel like Tony the Tiger because this is great. I mean, just the chef's kiss of perfection. So much detail. Mm, like it's real. Is this a 3D mod? I can't even tell. This is just the shoe itself. Perfectly represented. All right, moving on. And then lastly, we have this Canon R5 coming in at 50 megapixels. And we already know what this one's going to look like, but I feel like it's important for the test to just go ahead and show it and compare it. So let's check all of them out together. So I exported each model from each different camera and imported it back into Blender. Let's check it out. And here it is, the big comparison. So it's all labeled. Let's start with the model for the three megapixel camera. At the very beginning, we were having trouble even just getting a model for this, like a complete model. We were just getting one side. So I think it's pretty good. I'm like a little bit surprised that we even were able to get a model at all. So I would say, you know, lace Lace definition, not looking too good. Uh, detail on the side, not too great. But you can tell that this is a skate high. You can tell what this is supposed to be. So I feel like to some extent, it is a successful 3D scan. You can use a three megapixel camera. Scamera. You can use a three megapixel camera to do photogrammetry scans. So we established that. I don't know why anybody would want to do that, but it's possible. Then our most curious model, 10 megapixels, over three times the resolution and it's just complete garbage. And yeah, it's terrible. It's, it's like soup. I mean, you can still tell it's a skate high, so it worked, but it's curious that the three megapixel would work better than the 10. Here's one thing that I figured out though. When, when you line it all up, like relatively orthographically, I have not altered the proportions of these. So the scale, I tried to get them all to the same scale, but that's all the full scale with all dimensions relative to each other. 
So from here you can see the 10 megapixel just looks bigger. All right. Then when you look at it from the front, it's like smushed and wider. And you look at it from the side and it's a little bit longer. I had a theory earlier about it being stretched out because I even noticed just like doing a photo of my face or something. Things seemed kind of stretched out once they got into the computer. I wonder if being stretched out confused the Polycam scan because there's no explanation for the three megapixel scan to look better than the, the 10 megapixel. It doesn't make any sense. And the 10 megapixel camera was capable of shooting 16 megapixels. So it, it like, there has to be an explanation for this anomaly. You know, it, it makes no sense. So I, th I think it's this weird stretching. I tried the 10 megapixel version two or three times. This is one of the better times for how it came out. But that's my theory is that it's the stretching. Now we have our model shot on our iPhone imported straight through the Polycam app. And that one, I mean, like I mentioned before, this is natively kind of how Polycam was designed to be used. And it is ooh, beautiful, 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 beautiful. I mean, you can see the individual laces. You can see the, the eyelets that the laces go through. You can see the leather texture. You can see the dimension. It's just a magnificent scan. Most of the bottom looks good, minus the hole. I mean, it is just so good. And this is from a phone. But, you know, 12 megapixels, whatever that matters. But again, I think it's really the, the dynamic range and how good iPhones are at getting consistent images within an environment. And then unsurprisingly, the reigning chant at a certain point, it seems like the resolution does help weighing in at 50 megapixels undefeated the Canon R5 scan. I mean, let's hide this. It looks so good. It looks so good. I mean, hurts so good. Life changing. Ugh, look at all that detail up in the toe, all the dirt. Wore these shoes like three times. Here, let me let me let me hit it with the R and just this thing is so beautiful. Lace detail, all the all the things that were still working in the iPhone scan, and then they're just like working even better here. So at the end of the day, the resolution obviously helps, but we're just talking about better camera technology here, just in every single way, better camera technology getting us a better result for our 3D scan. This is cool, a little, some, some unexpected twists and turns, but overall kind of what we were expecting. Generally what we were expecting, leave a comment below what you thought would happen and if, if this lined up with what you thought. And at the end of the day, resolution might just be the friends that we made along the way. But yeah, it seems like it's just overall image quality. There's no one element that makes the whole thing. So it is, resolution, it's dynamic range, it's sharpness, all mixed together in a pot. And then we have our higher image quality, also resulting in higher quality scans, which we already knew. But thanks again for watching. I always appreciate the subscriptions. I appreciate the comments. Let me know if you like this style of video and I'll try to answer any questions that you have. Let me know.